right, everyone. So, Blue White Control here. And this was submitted by Gorbachan. He is a Blue White Control player. He's actually the Blue White Contr Control player on my team. So, this was sent by him and what he recommends. So, I will do that. So, let's just run through what we got here. We have four colonnades, four field of runes, four flooded strands, two glacials, two hollows, a bunch of islands and plains for us to fetch up. We've got one house, four paths, four ops, and one spell snare. We're running rest and pieces in the main, huh? Is that what we're doing? Okay. Um, two leaks, two negates. We got a timely as well. We got two Gideons of the Trials, two Nimbles, one Detention Sphere, one Gideon Ally, three Jaces, three Cryptics, a Supreme, two Tefries, and four Terminus. Is this is this what we're doing? <laughs> okay. I'm down for it. And then uh, over in the side, we got two Blessed Alliances, two Purges, one Rest in Peace, two Sonys, one Baneslayer, one Lyra, one Ceremonious Rejection, one Dispel, one Disdainful Stroke, one Negate, and then two clicks. So, let's get this started. To a rest in peace with a bunch of ops and a Teferi. Uh, I think this is plenty fine to keep. We got all the draws in the world, right? And let's go colony and pass. So if they're in a graveyard based deck, so we drop this rest in peace. They can pretty much just concede right now. Ooh, God, I don't think they are. So I think we just want to opt here and to see if we're able to opt again. Terminus. Hmm. I don't think we want that, do we? We're not going to be able to shuffle back into the top of our deck right now. I think we're just going to ship that to the bottom. I draw another one, so we're just going to play the field and pass it over. Looks like we're going against Infect. Um, I... Yes, this is not bad. We can reveal it and take out their normal at the very least. Slow down their ability to activate their Ink Moth and Pump It if they don't have any other green sources or mana sources. Have to pass it here. Alrighty. If we can get another land, we can activate Field of Ruin, which will be very good for us. Did not. Hmm. Puts us in a tough spot. I think we're just going to have to pass it back and hold up the gate here.
we still don't have another man, so I think we have to do the same thing and just hold up leak. play the flash burn or we can just field of run I think the field of run plans the best bet um, and I think we actually want to do it right now yep If we play Detention Sphere, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Detention Sphere has too high risk. They could just give it protection and we could just die on their turn. So I'm thinking we just play Colony Tapped and then Timely, get some dudes, and then see where yeah, it takes us. Just gonna be blocking. Well, let's just update what we're playing for Twitch. Just blocking the infect guy here. We don't really care about the one one, and if they were forcing them to just throw that on there, so we're okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> this is the weirdest green red control list. It's the best green red control list. <laughs> um, so we can either go with Jace here, try to bounce. I don't think that's as strong. I think I'd rather try to go D Sphere, and then we're able to hold up Mana Lake with it as well. So we do this, but then um, we're not 
not gonna exile it. Yeah, we'll just pass. Uh, Gorb, I thought that was worth making them do that just because it takes out more punt spells out of their hand and more protection spells. And then next turn, we get to try to. Um, if we get another land, we can go Tefri, untap, and then hold up Nimble to throw it in to do an additional block. Did you think the line was too aggressive? Because it looks like they're not doing much now. Uh, we can Gideon now. Gideon and just start uh, upticking on their Glistener Elf. Or do you think Tefri is more worthwhile here? Because we get Tefri and try to tuck their Glistener Elf? Or. Um, Or we can go Teferi and just uptick, but that doesn't really do much. So I'm thinking I'm thinking we just do a Gideon here. And it puts them in a pretty difficult spot here. And then every turn from now on, we're going to just start dropping Planeswalkers. And I think they're going to just have to end up scooping as a result of that. Yeah, I think next turn we're going to be dropping Teferi. And then letting us get that extra card. But with where we're at now, we're able to stabilize, block down, and then Gideon will make it so they have to invest quite a bit in order to even get back into a playing field with us. Interesting, they're swinging. Oh, they just not really sure what they're doing. We're just going to pass. They're attacking Gideon with the Dryad Arbor and us with the Glistener. Oh, I should have blocked. Because they can pump their Dryad Arbor. That's... Am I missing something here? Why are they pumping it? 
doesn't deal any damage, so I can't deal any infect damage. So I think here we're just going to want to um, run out the ball and pay the life for it. And we're just going to play Jace. And we're going to start brainstorming. And then we can hold up the nimble. Or we can, I mean, uh, or we can bounce the glistener off here, but. really relevant. Don't need that and don't need another nimble I suppose. They got an ink moth. pump if they pump their infect guy here we can just path it yeah. Rest in peace on top. I wouldn't mind getting a little bit deeper. We can block them with colonnade right now, though. And so I think just. I don't think this is going to be our safest play. And then we can go activate Colonnade, beat them for four, and then hold up Nimble that we can just cast in and, bl and block. So we can start putting a clock on them. Okay, cool. We're on the same game plan then.
so I think we still need to bounce that blighted agent and then just hold up for another block I wouldn't mind rest in peace in here just in case they have um, another massive pump spell so I have to do this Cast this rest in peace, then we can still activate our nimble or our colonnade here. Yeah, yeah, that is true. We should have uh, gone for the colony attack. Um, on the plus side, I think we can cast the nimble here. And then we can swing with nimble and soldier. Uh, brainstorm with Jace, hold up Cryptic to just tap their team down when they go to attack, and then we win from there. And we'll take a path just for additional assurances. it to us. If that's the case, I think we just let them attack and we can we can put it into their side that they have to react to us. Because this isn't lethal and we're okay with that. They'd have to play a pump spell and something in order to make it lethal. So even here that's only nine poison that we'd be at. So see what that okay. we'll be more than happy to do that. We just tap their team down and bounce the ink moth, and then on our turn we just swing for lethal. Tell me what you are thinking we should be bringing in here. Mm 
but I'm thinking those are the six cards I want to bring in. Let me know if those are the same cards you would want to bring in. And then I'm not a big fan of the rest in peace here. It only hits. You would bring in the clicks over the angels? Okay. If we resolve a angel, though, we pretty much just get them. But I will listen to you. That seems correct. And then what else would you guys cut? Looks like we got a good game plan. Woohoo, we are up to 20 viewers. Uh, so everyone just joining us, we are playing some blue-white control, and I am Voodoo, and I'll be streaming every Sunday um, from 6 on. This hand seems pretty sweet. We got paths timely, I mean paths and fields to hit their creatures, so we'll keep it. Um, the downside here is that we um, are in a situation where we can't play Glacial in turn 1, so we'll just have to play like an island. Um, and I'll be streaming every week on uh, Sundays um, from 6 onwards. Um, probably running two leagues every Sunday and then one more night during the week that I'll try to make pretty consistent, but it'll usually be Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. That's a very fair point for the Miracle on Terminus. just let them hit us here right because it's just one damage not a big deal and then next turn we're gonna be able to field their income off because i don't think it's worth it to try to path it and then they could just prevent it so what do you guys think yeah and we're just going to field here get a white source we can path.
imagine we're just uh, playing land and we can just hold up opt and trip, uh, double paths here. So we're not really in a rush to do anything. We never want to fight in the combat steps if we can avoid it. Okay. Now they have Ink Moth activated here. Before we go to the beginning of combat, um, I feel like we might want to opt here just in case we hit a Terminus. We'd be able to just Terminus the board here uh, before we have to blow our paths on anything. another field which I think is just fine to keep at this point because we're going to be able to field their ink moth just in case anything happens um, because we're gonna be pathing here and then pathing again or is the second ink moth being exiled here worth it that we would just want to ship this to see if we can get a terminus or something We got a hollowed. And let's go ahead and path this. Comes to be five. One more. Yeah. Dispel. And I think we're still going to path it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. We would just uh, play a land here, Jace, and then we'd brainstorm, set up for Terminus, and we have a path to help us out as well. So seems like we'd be in a pretty good spot. So we go land terminus, and if we want to on their turn, we'll, um, okay. So pathing, so let's go flooded and then terminus. And then we will path the noble. Thanks guys. Love the assistance and we got that with a 1020.
Looks like we're going against Cavemen Beno One. All right, what do you guys think? Should we be keeping this? Uh, if we're going, I mean, it seems like I have a, a lot of interaction here. We've got Alice for any creature decks, negates super relevant against Mel's decks, and then we got a rest in peace to try to just lock out. So, keeping it. Needle Spire. Nope. and spells. So Needle Spire makes me think they're on prison. I don't see too many decks play that land. Drowsy? Yeah, that would make sense playing the uh, the haste threatened one and the blinking one. This is not great for us. House is dead. Rest in peace is dead against them. The gate's probably not that relevant right now because they have a pretty creature heavy deck. Tefri is a little ways off, and so is Terminus. see a smasher there. This is looking rough. Yeah, there's a lot of decks where Rest in Peace is very relevant now. Oh, okay. Okay, I see what they're doing. I'm digging it. I'm very sad right now because we're dead, but I'm digging it. dead no matter what dead no key we're out of here all right that wasn't good <laughs> let me know what you guys think we should be bringing in Thinking we should bring in the Bless, the Ceremonist, the Disdainful, maybe these Angels as well. 
a lot of stabilize against their creatures. It does get the issue of it is the threaten. Now, you would cut the owls, the snare, and the negates. Now, the owls and the, uh, I know the snare is narrow. You would leave in the obstructionist? Is that what you're saying? Because possibly just heading the threaten effect? Is that what do you think is worth it keeping? And thanks for us joining us, Greg. Well, I don't know what else we would be cutting. Do you want to cut a? I feel like the rest of this is pretty relevant. Cut a nimble and leave in the oust. Okay, I'm good with that. Let's run it. All right, we got a ceremonious, and we've got a path. Seems solid. Keeping us in the game, and then we could try to get to this Lyra. good to keep. Now, I don't think they ever play anything on turn one that would warrant us trying to shock for the path and play wood there. They do have Simeon Spirit Guide, so they could go Chalice on turn one. Um, so we definitely want to hold up the ability to, you know, get this rejection out. So what do you guys think? Should we shock here? Because if we don't shock now, we're not going to have access to white next turn either. So if we just shock now, we'll have access to both. And then possibly being able to play the colonnade next turn. Um, gives us in a much better situation later on, just costing us the two life now. You would, you would go colonnade? They can... I don't feel like colonnade is the right play. They can definitely go Simeon Spirit Guide and then drop a Chalice on one. Yeah, I feel like it's either island or fountain. I'm leaning towards um, the island, but I just wanted to ask about the fountain here because the fountain's going to be able to, no matter what, we have to be able to do it in order to get access to white. That's fair. think that's a spell we care too much about just let them get the 3-1 we don't want to counter it for sure I'd rather counter like a, a smasher or something so I think 
we're okay with just taking the three. And then all the threats that they have, it's definitely the last tier one. And we can go Field of Ruin here. We could Field of Ruin their temple, and then that way reduce the chance of them being able to cast another spell, and then we want to fetch up a blue source so we can rejection whatever they did get. What do you guys think about that line? Field of Ruin, the temple, and then uh, holding up rejection. I think the downside of waiting though is that we would potentially be opening ourselves up to a like a thought knot and it, they could be doing it with through caverns so then we wouldn't be able to do anything about it where now if they, the worst that they can do is if they do get a thought knot it's not going to be protected because they'll have to do it with a temple Chalice on one, I think we have to counter that. Because that way we can keep our paths in every direction. Should we miracle here just to get rid of the three one? It doesn't seem as big of a deal to me because we can just um, timely here and go back up to 20 and then hold up the terminus later on if they get a lot of the, the smashers and the thaw knots in play. Just in case they're gonna thought not us. And if we draw a land here, um, we can drop the Lyra. If not, we could even consider pathing our own dork to get it. Alright, so they got a Thalia. Alright, so what what is the thoughts on pathing our own soldier to guarantee um, guaranteeing that we have access to Lyra next turn. And then we're one turn closer to Terminus Mana. Yeah, Terminus will be seven. Who they had another obligator, okay. So we're gonna take in a good bit of damage here, but we can double block the obligators. And then that way we're only taking 7 damage at most. And if they swing, we just lie around Thalia. That's 
fine too. We can't be able to pick that. Yep. Okay, so it definitely seems more worthwhile for us to just start swinging and gaining that five life because if we hold back, all we're really doing is preventing damage that they're not swinging into. Yeah, pathing and opting on their turn definitely seems like the right call. Hmm. So they have a spyglass. They're probably going to hit our colony here, and I think that's fine. We can't really do much about that. I guess we could try to opt, see if we hit a counter spell. But even then, I don't think we necessarily care. But I guess we'll try it just in case. Alright, Blessed Alliance. I am more than happy to put that on top of my deck. Yeah, we're not we're really not gonna try to cast a terminus, honestly. going to be on the Lyra train. I don't know if Pathing the Thalia is even worth it. It's not really doing much to us right now. We're still able to cast all of our spells pretty reasonably, and I'd rather Path or hit a more relevant uh, Eldrazi that I think they're going to be dropping. Karn, okay. Give you the land, huh, opponent. or getting that matter reshaper so I'm just gonna swing at them and then this way we can drop Baneslayer and then set ourselves up for the next turn yeah we'll have a two turn clock here as long as nothing Major happens to our angels. Uh, they can have a cavern. Cool. We got there. Let's run it back. Yeah, 
Yeah, Baneslayer does not pump Lyra. Lyra pumps Baneslayer. Now, I will let you guys know that no matter what, I do have to uh, call it at 11. So if we're not done with the league, I'll have to pause it to wrap up that assignment and then come back to this. Um, as far as the content goes, though. I do apologize if we have to cut it short there, but I think we got a lot of time to play with. Ah, uh, so this hand's pretty much just an opt. I don't think this is good enough to keep. You want me to stream me doing homework? I, I think that's pretty boring. I'll definitely hang out and stream if you guys want. Yeah, I think we have to ship this. If they get any kind uh, of content, I mean, any kind of hand here that's somewhat reasonable, they're just going to crush us, so we have to ship this. Oh, this hand's... I think we have to keep this hand because we've got the Supreme here, but this is rough because if they get like a Thought Knot, we're pretty much just dead. Even a Thalia would slow us to turn 5 Supreme. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're going to keep. A land would get us... I think we have to just dig for something more relevant here. We don't really need a land. So. Oh, I should play it. Plans first. For that terminus potential if I ever needed it, but... Doesn't look like that's a reality that we have to worry about. Just playing Field of Ruin and hitting their caverns here. Um, yeah. So, do, uh, should we hit the creature that's a th uh, potential threat, or should we just take off the caverns? Because I definitely want to activate it either way, I feel. Ghost Quarter, I think, is irrelevant. You lied to me. I put all my faith in you. And you just lied to me. That is great logic, Gorgon, that we would uh, have been able to hit it regardless. We didn't have an answer to it. We'd be able to hit the Mutal Vault this turn, but, you know, things have passed. And now we are stuck with our decision. I 
I don't hate you. I don't think I hate anyone. So. Okay, okay. Opponent names to three. Beats us up for three. So it's not worth supreming yet. We can field of ruin, hit their mute vault, hold up opt. I think that's pretty reasonable. We should have, but it's fine. Uh, terminus just for the displacer? I feel like that's worth it just to take another third off the board. We've got more things and they have to definitely worry about it. So reveal, yes. Terminus. We're so good at drawing Terminus. It's fine. They're not going to be able to do anything to us now. Look at us. We have all the Terminus in the world. We have all the Supremes in the world. We'll literally just kill all the creatures. They named Tefri. So here, do we just start on the beatdown plan? Reasonably, they're not going to be able to activate that Ghost Quarter. Or do we want to just rep a... Um, cryptic we don't have. Beat plan is, it is. Yeah, I feel like forcing them into the ghost quarter situation is ideal for us because they're already not hitting any lands. Yeah, which is why I don't think they can the ghost quarter, they just have to sit on it. Yeah, definitely we'll try to hold the fetch um, for Jace. They're going to probably get rid of Supreme here, and then we'll Terminus on our turn.
All right, we got a counter spell now. to the beatdown plan. They did Simeon out uh, the Thought Knot. They're on four mana now. Thought not, we will gladly counter. Only two more turns to go. Smasher, Smasher. Yeah. We're gonna gain some life and they're gonna sacrifice a creature. I think I targeted them to get life. We're gonna gain life, you're gonna get sacked. Oh. Finally. <laughs> So, I think we just want to jace here and start brainstorming. Did I hit them first? I did not. I think we're gonna go because we can play Gideon here or we can activate Colonnade. I feel like we just want to activate Colonnade and hit them um, so we can put them to death range and they have to hold up Ghost Quarter. Or do we just play Gideon because Gideon will top land and terminus? Yeah. Um, Gideon also lets us uh, put them in a position. I, I was thinking Gideon, because Gideon's going to let us. Yeah. And then we're just going to, I think, emblem here. And then just pass. There might have been merit to just uh, uptick and get it. Okay. 
I think we just want... No, we don't have lethal. Hmm. I think we can hold off another turn for the um, obligator. So we can go for a swing at them. They'll have to activate their colonnade. And we could uptick Jace on them. And then next turn we can set up for the terminus. Oh. Hmm. If we don't brainstorm though, we're not going to be able to put... So we'll brainstorm here, and we'll go terminus, terminus, and we can do this, play Lyra and swing, it's not an angel is it, no it's elemental. Yeah, we'll just do this and then swing with colonnade. And they have to deal with it. Member? Okay. Seems odd to me that they wouldn't dismember the Lyra, but that probably means they have an obligator. But if they obligate her, they lose. Cool. We are doing well. We're at 2 0. -oh. We have no lands. And we will keep this. We've got hands and spells and some draw spells. And we have a Gideon on top. I'll take that. Inquisition gets rid of our aunt. Does anyone actually play 8-Rack anymore? Just gonna start beating down. Mardu. If I get Jace, I'll have to crack it anyway. So I guess I'll just crack the flooded strand now. 
there is a chance they play one of Blood Moon in the main, so I don't want to be cut off from um, the light sources. Okay, so we can de-sphere their young pyromancer away and then activate Gideon after that. Probably taking that just try to race them here with colonnade and then they might have like a removal for it but I feel like that's our best bet we're gonna we're gonna be on a faster clock it doesn't seem worth it to try to terminus away two tokens so So if we colonnade them, we can have them on a two turn clock unless they get another helix or a collective brutality. Um, alternatively, we just play the tough free, tick up, and then set ourselves up. It'll be slower, uh, but we can definitely just find an answer. Ooh, two conflicting answers. Well, the Tefri is the safer play, and then the Colonnade is the one that's going to just put them on the clock. I think we're racing them pretty well. Um, so I think we're just going to... I don't know. Well, it's your deck, Gorbachev, so I'm going to listen to you. So we managed to get there.
Yeah, I agree with you, Greg. I would have gone with the other line of uh, just pushing, pressing forward and seeing if we can just end the game because they only had a couple outs to stop us from winning and they would have needed either instant speed removal um, or a collective or a helix, which they had already burnt one helix and one collective. Um, so in this matchup here, what are we thinking about bringing in? Um, I do want to bring in the purges and the rest in peace seem really strong to me. Um, being a creature matchup, I'm leaning towards the Baneslayer and the Lyra as well. I am more than happy to take out the Leaks and the Negates. So we got to cut one more card. So I'm leaning towards Spell Snare. And that'll be a pretty even 5 5 swap. Okay. We got it. So this is a land light hand, but we've got a lot of great spells. Um, we've got Purge and Path to do a lot of their... Best Opal deck now that KCI is banned. I think Affinity, right? Because there hasn't been a new one that popped up. Yeah, I think Hardened Affinity or Affinity is just going to be where we're at um, with Mox Opal for now. There's been a couple people that have tried to um, play new versions of KCI. There's one that I saw float around with um, the Thopter Sword combo um, instead using that shell for a really um, just mid-rangey deck. That is not the dredge deck. Feels bad. Rabble Master. Hmm. I think I would rather just purge the Rabble Master. That way we're not accelerating them towards anything. And I feel like with our hand, we just want to get a white source because we can feel for the blue source. terrible spot to just uh, timely here I don't know if they still play Lily in Mardu Greg so if we don't feel the Vruin now if they were to drop a Blood Moon we'd be in a pretty annoying spot because we won't have access to blue but the only blue spell we have in hand is cryptic and that's a little far away anyhow because we don't have another land uh, where time is gonna allow us to get more life from them and then just put us in the um, advantageous position so I'm leaning towards just going timely and then just trying to race them on the board. Rest in peace is pretty great against them. 
think that's what we're going to do. I'm going to tap it this way though, because I want to leave path open just in case they do blood mode on us for some reason. Here, I think we want to just uh, field of ruin away their white source and then get ourselves our third blue and then set ourselves up for cryptic the following turn. So, Okay. We've got some good redundancy right now. I'm thinking we jace and uptick on them. They're gonna call against command. Okay. Hmm. So they're gonna call against command us. I, I, I feel more confident about that play because if we uptick jace on them, they're not gonna be able to kill it with the spirits, and we're gonna be able to keep them off of their plays. And then I think we can just pitch a. I'm thinking we just pitch the path here. And then next turn, try to brainstorm into the Bane Slayer. What do you guys think about that line? Counterbouncing seems good. I'm also good with that. Countering the Coligans, bouncing a spear, and then we're definitely winning the race. And then we don't lose another spell. Okay. I really like that. Let's do it. Let's go with that route. So we can just drop Jace, bounce the spirit, path the other spirit, and uh, go for the kill. Boom. 
three and zero. Oh. Great times, great times. So for everybody joining us, we are on blue eye control. We're three and zero right now. Um, we've got two more matches to try to finish out before eleven. Uh, I am Voodoo. I'm just uh, starting out streaming, trying to get into it, um, do it for fun mainly. Uh, I've been playing Magic for a long time now. I am trying to stream every Sunday night from 6 till about 10 or 11, and then I'll try to stream Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday another time from 6 to 10 or so. Um, this week we're going to be streaming again on Wednesday. Um, I do upload all of the decks we play onto my YouTube channel and my Twitch. Uh, we have played some Vanifar decks so far, two versions of Ponza. Um, so definitely a lot of fun times. And then we'll be, we played another version of Rhythm Ponza earlier today. Um, on Wednesday, we'll be playing... Um, on Wednesday, we'll be playing Rug Moon and Burn. And then next week, we have... Uh, four color war and another deck up on the roster whatever deck you guys want to see you get played just let me know I'm more than happy to snag it up when you play it yeah I thought what they actually just talked about the banning and their logic behind everything was really good and then they even took it a little bit further and even talked about the other cards they considered um, which usually we don't get anything like that. They usually just ban this and they try to keep it kind of on the down low because they don't want to speculate too much in any card. But I appreciated them looking into all those other cards and talking about why they banned it. This is the why the reasoning of the card they have chosen. Um, I still wish we would get some of those things. But uh, I'm still happy with where Modern's at as a whole. We do not have a white, uh, I mean a blue source, um, which makes it pretty rough. But if we draw any land, uh, we're going to be able to get that blue source. What do you guys think? We are on the uh, play here. Sorry about that, everyone. So, yeah, what do you guys think about this hand? We can hit any land, and then we're going to be in a much better spot, but until we hit that land, we're in a really rough spot. You mull it? All right. Bit of the opposite side now. Oh yeah, definitely pick the unstable name just because of it. <laughs> yeah, this seems like a annoying keep, but we're gonna keep it. I think we're gonna bottom this out because we're just searching for another land at this point. This 
going to play out. We're going to get another source here, and then we're going to build a field to get the other source of mana we need. Betting Drakes. Phoenix, well, uh, not Drakes, but Phoenix. Land. Okay, we got what we ask for. Thanks for joining, Melon. Sarkin. Okay. Just hold up cryptic. This is 100% jank. So Sarkin can plus one to discard a card and then draw a card, add two mana for dragons, and then his alt creates four five five dragons. the Platinum Imperion combo in here with Madcap that we just saw them discard. I don't think there's too much value in um, crypting here. I don't mind fielding though. So they're playing in like a blue-red control shell. Yeah, kind of a jank blue moon does seem right. Looks like they're gonna ship our cryptic. We've got a land though. We're definitely gonna grab a planes at this rate. We're just going to be upticking our getting so we scale this as well. I think we're just gonna get in here, uptick on the click, and then we'll be able to hold up negate or path, which puts us, I think, in a pretty decent spot. They're gonna remand us. Okay, do we want to fight over this? What do you guys think? Should we just take the take the card back they get to draw or should we negate this so we can definitely take up on the click? They don't have the ability to alt with the Sarkin yet, but they can power something out. You guys are saying take the Take it and then just pass? Negate it, okay. Yeah, I was gonna say, I wanted to negate it, so. Yeah, if they power out a dragon, unless it's a haste or, um, or like, well, it could be like a storm breath, but even then we're not too far off from being able to terminus the board. Definitely had the Blood Moon. It's a good read, folks. Hmm. I wouldn't mind getting rid of this Sarkin. 
you guys think it's too aggressive to path that um, path that click, or do we just attack it and see what and see what they will do? I guess we put the ball in their court because it's still not in the range of alting anyway. getting attacked we have another Gideon and this doesn't even kill Gideon so I guess we're good with it taking the hit here I don't know about emblem next turn Gorb just because I'd rather get rid of the Sarkin that's on the battlefield, and then that way they can stop um, digging through their deck. Well, it looks like they're gonna bolt it. Okay, I guess we're fine with that. And I think we're just gonna uptick here on their click. Well, it looks like they're gonna counter and draw. Alrighty. They're being a much better control deck than us, I just want to say. Alrighty. So we can path here. Get rid of the threat while they have no mana available. Yeah, yeah. No, we can't pass the click. I forgot they blew moon, so we're just passing. We're just passing. You can't say it's a. Uh, you, you're talking about the opponent's list being spicy? Yeah, it's pretty spicy. I was saying, you're talking about your own list. You're not allowed to talk about your own list like that. I think we're just gonna get we're gonna path this click now. Our opponent's just doing a whole lot of nothing. It's just drawing and discarding every turn. Making their draws pretty relevant. I'm hoping they alt. <laughs> we could just terminus. Oh man. Okay. So we can try to drop a Jace here, but there's a good chance they're gonna counter it, but.
think uh, I think I'd rather just pass, but Leak's not gonna do much. They have so much mana. Uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna drop Jace here and see if they have anything. They most likely have a counter, but gotta get rid of them anyway. I feel like this Sarkin's gonna ult and we're gonna die. Because we're gonna then try to Terminus, and then they're going to counter it, and then we're gonna die to a Sarkin ult. I feel like we're the only person to have that happen to them. Come on, ult with Sarkin. I wanna die to it. <laughs> Alt. And they got a backup Sarkin. Non issue for them. And he's going to rummage some more. Alright. Let's try to Terminus. Hey, we're playing Jeskai now. Alright, we need you to have a Cryptic. They're gonna remand. Okay. Hmm. So I think our only out now is to just pan, take this card, and then right right now we can just um, we can path them to try to get one extra. Nope, we don't. We can't extra. We're just dead. This is it. No, we're already at sixteen. Right? Oh no, we can. We'll be at one. We'll be at one. We can do it. We can do it. We can stabilize at one. this pile I feel like we're bringing in purges we want to go on a control plan right I pretty much should have installed this point losing that card Yeah, he, he definitely was able to filter through his deck a lot more than us. Um, I don't think we can just take out all of our uh, all of our terminuses and paths. Um, they have the madcap plan, and we want to be able to at least answer it, right? So what, you guys are thinking two paths? Is what you're saying, Gorby? Two paths and a, an oust? I don't think Rest in Peace is doing anything in this matchup. <laughs> Disdainful Stroke is still relevant, right? Hits their... Take out two turns.
What do you guys think about that swap? Yeah, I would expect Madcap to get sided out, but I'd rather not uh, lose to it on the off chance they do decide to keep it. At least having some answers. So we, we, I mean, we still have some answers, so we're fine. All right, let's run it like this. All right, we got spells and draw effects and our mana. We're gonna wanna get ourselves the regular sources, go on basic sources pretty quick, but I think this is fine. Angel's definitely something that I consider, but... That Bane Slayer would have protection to those Sarkin Altered Dragons, tell you what. I really want to nimble that Scalding Tarn, I'll be honest with you. I've never gotten to do it and I really want to do it, so I'm going to not crack this Flooded Strand. I'm going to play the Island. Yeah, yeah, come on opponent, crack the fetch. So if we get a planes here, we'll be able to play Gideon next turn, and we'll still have mana for everything else. Um, I think that's the line I'd rather go, just be able to drop a threat right now. And I'd rather uptick here just to get him out of bolt range. Terminus. Is this how it always works? You path out half the cards and you still get the other half? You are all knowing, Greg. You 
we're all knowing. All right, can't do much about that. Have you guys ever seen this in modern? <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, I just want a path here because I want to be able to play Gideon next turn. They have a backup Niv Mizzet. Oh my gosh, they're gonna bolt our Gideon and then target it with the. Oh my gosh, that's funny. <laughs> okay. Solid. <laughs> well, debatably, I think we just want a terminus, or but because we're gonna have to do it on our turn, and that way we can hold up. Looks like we can't hold it up either way, but this way we would have an instant speed answer later on um, if we needed it, rather than just being down to a sorcery speed answer. So that's why I'm leaning towards playing the uh, Terminus instead of, yeah. I guess we're okay with letting them ship either one, right? Because we can either Terminus or um, Path. But Path, potentially, uh, if we go Terminus, it could get countered. Yeah, let's Path it in response. Gideon we can't cast, so we're just going to pass. We're going to die to that dragon bolt again, I swear. Blood Wounds don't work. Uh, now seems as good a time as any to counter a remand. Negate. Okay. Hmm. 
I guess we just opt here. See what we get. Is there any real reason to wait till their turn? I guess there's enough reason in case we hit. Um, we already cast one terminus. I think that's really the only thing we could have hit, and we already decided out the other two. So this would let us possibly play a Gideon or something if we got it. So. Bottom. Cryptic. Solid. I always want more spells I can't cast. We're definitely gonna die to this Sarkinult. I'm gonna be the guy known as the person that died to two Sarkinults in a row. Oh, you trying to click us again? Teferi. Run out Teferi and pray that they don't have um, nothing. Yeah, I think that's pretty much the line we're on. Hoping that it just buys us a turn, takes out another counter. It looks like I get the Revan, but are they gonna alt? Oh no, they're gonna add mana? What do you got? Are we gonna cast another Niv Mizzet? Yeah, we are! This, uh, this, uh, Sarkindex got some, uh, pretty good dragons going. <laughs> oh my gosh. This <laughs> is gross. <laughs> oh. So, we're at three, and we can Teferi and Tuck the Niv Mizzet. I don't think we can Terminus, because if we Terminus, um,. Then they're just gonna alt with Sarkin and kill us. So, <laughs> yeah, I think this is what we're on right now. And Snap is gonna put us to one, and we died to so many things. Just so many things were dead. Oh, we're just dead. <laughs> uh. <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh. Oh. Okay, so I do apologize, but I can tr Oh my gosh, this is going to be really close if I try to run another one. Oh. Because I need to do home. I have to do. Let me double check. 
because I'm pretty sure I did one, I did like five out of the six assignments, but I still need to knock out that other one. Let me double check, make sure I didn't just already do it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, close is in um, going past 11. Not that, uh, not that game. We got, we got crushed. Yeah, I unfortunately have to call it quits here because I need to finish my homework. So sorry, guys, we're going to have to call it right now. Um, I will be back um, with another stream on um, on Wednesday at 6 o'clock. We'll play from 6 to 10. We'll be playing Rug Moon and Burn. And so thank you so much for joining me tonight. Uh, really appreciate it. If you guys do want to see more content, you know, follow me. Um, let me know what decks you guys want to see, um, anything else. So thanks, for everyone. Have a great night.